after Nehemiah, we don't hear from Esther much, but it has, the book of Esther has a singular claim to fame. And that is that it's the one book in the Bible that does not mention God. But here's the story of Esther, the queen. And the queen, some strange things happened to the queen. Here we go. So the king and Haman went to dine with Queen Esther. And on the second day, at the banquet of wine, the king again said to Esther, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Up to half the kingdom, it shall be done. Then Queen Esther answered and said, If I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request. For we have been sold, my people and I, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. Had we been sold as male and female slaves, I would have held my tongue, although the enemy could never compensate me for the king's loss. So King Ahasuerus answered and said to Queen Esther, Who is he, and where is he, who would dare presume in his heart? to do such a thing. And Esther said, the adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. And so Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. Then the king arose in his wrath from the banquet of wine and went into the palace garden. But Haman stood before and went into the palace garden. Oh, stood before Queen Esther, pleading for his life, for he saw that evil was determined against him by the king. And when the king returned from the palace garden to the place of banquet of wine, Haman had fallen across the couch where Esther was. And the king said, Will he also assault the queen while I am in the house? As the word left the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Now Harbona, one of the eunuchs, said to the king, Look, the gallows, fifty cubits high, which Haman made for Mordecai, who spoke good, on the king's behalf, is standing at the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him on it! So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king's wrath was subsided. And now we go to Psalm 27. It's, it's different than is in your, your few Bibles or your programs. Psalm 27. It's an exuberant Declaration of Faith by David. David says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I desire of the Lord that I will see, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And you will be a Lord, and to the fire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me, he shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies and slaughtered me. Therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, In your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as have been down by me. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And 
we go to the book of James, right after the Hebrews, and we're going to James 5, 13 through 20, found on page 1075 of your pew Bible. Good old James. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. Kept you waiting. Kept you waiting for one minute. No, you didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> one minute. And the, the, I'm sure the thoughts that went through your mind, well, the thoughts that went through some of your minds are what the heck is he doing? Some of the others were, did you do something wrong? <clears throat> Some of them were, oh good heavens, where's this going to lead to? And another might have been remembering back from last week when I kept you waiting for four minutes. We only waited for 25% of the time that we did last week. And what did we do during those four minutes last week? We prayed. And I could see some of you taking that time to do exactly that. But you know what? Waiting stinks. I don't enjoy waiting. Waiting is difficult. Doing not a lot is difficult. And yet it says in the psalm for today, Wait on the Lord. <sighs> Waiting on the Lord is challenging at best. Because you know what? Our sense of time is different than God's. Our sense of when we got to get things done is different than God's. And now you all know, I think I said in the sermon last week, that hanging on my door 
It's a sign that says, better to do something imperfectly than nothing flawlessly. <coughs> and I still think that's true. Because no matter what you do, if it's wrong, you can fix it. But our psalm today says to wait. Now, waiting doesn't mean sitting in silence for more than a minute. Waiting could be for an hour. Waiting could be for months. Waiting could be decades. It's what we do when we wait that matters. Because waiting tells us one thing, that we're waiting for something. And if we're waiting for something, that means we know that something is going to happen. If something's going to happen, <clears throat> what that means is that we believe that God will make something happen in God's good time. So if we know that God is going to make something happen, we can have faith in God. You know, there's the old story about somebody having a party at 7 o'clock. And I know you've all had a situation like this. You're having a party at 7. So here it gets to be 6.30. Yep, it's 6.30. Now, oh, wait a minute. It's quarter to 7. I know people are going to show up. I mean... I've invited the whole crew. I know people. It's quarter to seven. It's five minutes to seven. <laughs> Let me make sure everything's ready. Okay, they're going to be here any minute. Five after seven. <laughs> Nobody's here. I don't want to have no stinking party anyway. The heck with them all. Sometimes. Sometimes we wait like that. With an expectation that something's going to happen. Something we want to happen. And when it doesn't happen, we get all wet out of shape. And when we wait on God, I know all of you have waited on God and what you've been praying for didn't happen. And it makes you question your faith. It makes you think about it. It makes you wonder what's going on with this whole faith thing anyway. But when you look at your life with hindsight, when you look at your life looking back, you realize that God was there each and every time. God was there when you were waiting for God, but God was doing whatever God does. And you know, strangely enough, what God does is not necessarily what we want. We need to wait on God. It's a challenge. And it's no fun. You know, Disney has the right idea about waiting. If you go to Disney World, 
they have all sorts of lines. They've got TVs to keep you entertained. And then these lines, when you finally get to the end of the line, you walk in and guess what? There's another room full of lines. <laughs> that you didn't see, that you didn't expect. And if you really can't wait, you go get a fast pass, which tells you at 11.03, you can just zoom in, you can laugh at all those people that are waiting. God doesn't have a fast pass. God wants you to wait on Him, to trust Him, trust in Him, to know, to have faith that God will answer your prayer. That at the end of your waiting, God will be there. Just like the pirates of the Caribbean. I think that's probably the first time anybody's ever compared God to the pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> but just like that, God will be there and God does what God does. And I think sometimes when, when we pray, we ask God for an expected outcome. Yes, the Giants won Thursday night, but I don't think that had to do with waiting or prayer. But we expect what we pray for to happen. And it doesn't always. It doesn't because God's got something better. God's got something different. God's got something totally beyond your expectations or wildest dreams. And we can't even envision it. So use your waiting time constructively. I've talked to people today who, who are absolutely convinced that things are taking too much time. But it's God's time. And what needs to happen will happen. So have faith in God's time. Have faith that at the end of the wait, at the end of the one minute, at the end of what you only feel is not productive, at the end, God will be there. At the end, God will support you. At the end, God will love you and do the best for you. Because you know what? Even though you're doing the waiting, you are special in God's eyes. You are loved incredibly <laughs> by God. And, and you know what? God is worth the wait. So trust God. Wait patiently if we got it. Because, you know, sometimes God does answer prayers immediately. Most often not. Most often, we have to use the phrase, in God's good time. But you know what? It all will happen in God's good time. Have faith. Wait patiently. And wait constructively. Amen. Amen.